It's great to um, just sometimes reflect on um, the way that my life has changed since I've um, really adopted this Four Mainstays lifestyle. And it's, it's just changed beyond recognition. And the way that it used to be for me was um, just, just everything was a struggle. Everything, everything seemed difficult. Everything seemed like something I had to work at. I had to think about. I had to understand. I had to consider. Everything was something that um, either filled me with incredible positivity or with unbearable negativity and then there were the bits in between that were kind of boring but because they were boring they were actually negative too and and uh, I was in this kind of permanent state of, of confusion because I, I knew somehow and I had always known that a life was possible where I was actually comfortable with myself and I was able to be comfortable with other people and I knew from my own experience of having glimpses of this reality that there was this reality of just complete perfection uh, and I knew that deeply and one of the things that was really frustrating was knowing it was there but it was always just somehow out of reach or it was like some kind of temporary recognition or temporary state that seemed to come about due to certain circumstances or things that I did, um, but I could never hold on to it. And so that was, that was really frustrating. It was almost like I wish I didn't know that because the frustration of knowing it was there but not having it as this um, everyday experience, it was just tortuous. Because then the search began, how, how, how do I bring about this recognition again? How do I recreate this state of bliss or oneness? Or, and um, so I tried lots of different things, lots of different ways. And um, there are many ways that you can bring about these states of oneness or recognition or bliss or ecstasy or whatever you want to call it. But my experience was that I could never hold on to them no matter how hard I worked, I'd achieve this incredible state and then it would be gone again and I'd be bored or I'd be frustrated that it had gone or the tension of then trying to hold it in place and never succeeding. And all of this was basically due to a simple misunderstanding as to the, the nature of my mind. Um, I had been trained to focus in on all of the descriptions, uh, what we can just call data. So the thoughts, emotions, sensations, experiences, memories, intuitions, all, all of this experience, I've been told and trained myself to focus in on these descriptions and then to try and make sense of the world based on these descriptions. But, but when I began to look for myself, what could I actually say about these descriptions, about these different data streams? Because they're just streaming through this intelligence. Well, all I could really say was that they seemed to appear spontaneously. I, I didn't really seem to be able to control them. And then all of them resolved naturally. Like um, mist in air just resolves naturally. There was no way that I could hold any description in place. There was no way I could hold any thoughts, any emotion or any sensation in place. And, and I tried. And I tried by this process of focusing in on them and describing them. Oh, I feel sad now. Why do I feel sad? I feel sad because um, I haven't got an intimate relationship or I feel sad because I can't get out of this intimate relationship or I feel sad because um, I'm not in India or I feel sad because I'm still in India or... <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm focusing in on it and describing them and, oh, God, I hate feeling sad and... You know, I always feel sad, and why do I feel sad? I shouldn't feel sad, and you know. And then there's this big thing called sadness. But with a simple instruction that I was given in this this training, which was just take a short moment of of relaxing those descriptions and recognizing that there is an open intelligence within which all of these descriptions appear. 
really began to shift um, my perspective. And by the repetition of this simple practice of short moments of the instinctive recognition of open intelligence, the emphasis really began to shift from only focusing on these ever-changing descriptions to recognizing the inseparability of these descriptions from open intelligence, of the data streams from this vast expanse of pure benefit within which they occur. Practically what that meant was that my relationship with the data, with the descriptions, began to change in a very, very profound way. I saw that I didn't have to manage them. I didn't have to look for certain descriptions and those were the ones that I had to chase after and then other ones that I'd labelled as negative were the ones that I had to avoid because that is what I'd been doing my whole life and it was just fucking exhausting <laughs> really exhausting all of my time and energy all of it going into trying to work out what would make me happy and how I bring that about what makes me miserable and how I avoid that and I very, very rarely and only for fleeting moments achieved something where I seemed like, it seemed like I could relax and just be myself. And that moment would come and it would be incredible and then it would go and the work would begin again. How do I bring that back again? <laughs> on and on and on and on. It, I mean, it's, that, it, it's, it's like the, the, the hamster on the wheel, but it was like a hamster on a wheel on speed, just <laughs> going faster and faster, thinking I needed to work harder and harder because I never seemed to get to where I wanted to get to. And so this is a key point though, the inseparability of the data from open intelligence. Data are the shine of open intelligence. Data are the dynamic energy, the beneficial display of open intelligence. So it is not data or open intelligence. It is data as open intelligence. It is open intelligence recognizing itself as its dynamic display of data. It is spontaneous reality recognizing itself in its spontaneous display. And so to recognize this by relaxing and allowing the data to be as they are for a short moment gives you the instinctive recognition of the nature of mind and the nature of reality. But to have this as just one recognition really is just like achieving any of these other states that I'd achieved before. And so what I saw was that what was required was first of all to repeat this recognition. So it's short moments repeated many times until it is obvious at all times. You just check it out until you're certain. So every time you relax, you recognize, is open intelligence naturally present? Is what's looking through my eyes looking through my eyes? <laughs> there it is. So it's not complicated and it's always obvious, but it does require this acknowledgement and this recognition for that to become more predominant than the focus on just the descriptions as if they were something separate and apart from this completely indivisible whole. And then what happens is the data become your fuel for benefit. Rather than being something that completely, it's like being a puppet on a string. You know, I feel good, that makes me feel good, I'll run after that, that's bad, I'm going to get away from that, I like that person, don't like that person. It, it, you're just like a puppet with your strings being pulled by all of these ever-changing descriptions and, and never really feeling comfortable. And so once you learn to relax with the data and to allow it to be as it is, then the perspective on the data naturally opens up, it expands it is transmuted into its already beneficial potency as open intelligence. So the data then inform our decision making from the perspective of open intelligence. The data are the way that we are able to navigate in a completely beneficial way from the perspective of open intelligence. So this inseparability is key. Data and open intelligence inseparable like the sky and the colour blue. 
Okay, well we can think about that. Is the you know is, can is the sky is the, is the can they take the color blue out from the sky? Are they two things? Oh, you've got the sky and you've got the color blue. But hold on, the sky is blue, and the only way I know that blue is because I can see the sky and it, you know just round and. The power of the metaphors is that you do not need to think about them because this instinctive recognition that is evoked through hearing these metaphors, through the transmission of this reality, is so profound and so immediate it doesn't require any intellectual analysis. And this is what I was introduced to by participating in the written trainings. Texts that were so profound, so direct, so unerring in, in confirming the nature of reality. So reading these texts and hearing this, this spoken about, it, it was just, it was so obvious. This was like, this is so familiar. I, I know all of this. But nobody had ever stated it in a way that was completely clear, easily understandable, and in a way that I could relate to my own life, my own direct experience. Was given a simple practice, short moments repeated many times, that I could take away and test in my life. And the more I tested it, the more obvious open intelligence became, and the more naturally my strengths, gifts and talents began to shine forth in a completely effortless way. Totally spontaneous, the display of benefit recognised to be what it was. But I saw I still had this habit of focusing in on the data streams irritation would come up and I'd feel really irritated and begin to spin off into that story and I saw that I needed support and this became easy for me when this old old-fashioned way of understanding myself as this body somehow separate and isolated from everybody else it, it just didn't make any sense anymore I'm open intelligence we are a networked intelligence I'm already intimately connected with everybody and everything. Open intelligence is the cosmic superglue that <laughs> pines all of us together. So we're already connected, we already share this reality. I don't need to work at that for that to be the case. But I saw the way I trained previously meant that I did not recognise that the way that I wanted to. And I could not express that benefit in the way that I wanted to. So then I decided, I want to train this up. And that's what I found in the Balanced View training. Simple practice, an educational system that I could participate in, and the more I did, the more obvious this became. The more brilliant this recognition of spontaneous benefit became. The more effortlessly I was able to be exactly who I am. This open-ended benefit generator, just like all of you outshining all of these completely old-fashioned ideas about who we are and what we're capable of. Living a magical reality by allowing everything to be exactly as it is, the already magical reality. So that's the offer, that's the invitation, that's the guarantee. I dare you. <laughs>